Hey everybody, Alec of Brendan Performance here. I've got with me. And Moody with uh, Performance Unleashed. What's going on? What's up? So yes, this is starting our video series of the installation of the Brendan Performance 3.8 Turbo Kit. We're going to go over everything with you guys as you guys follow us through these many different videos. Uh, this one's just the introduction, so we're going to go over the kit. We're going to talk about what you kind of things you need, tools, just kind of give you guys a highlight and overview. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and take a look at the kit. No, I'm excited. Now that we're sitting in front of pretty much everything in the kit, let's start going through it. Let's start off with the big boy here, the turbo. Uh, this is the 76 millimeter, um, and it's actually, you can see the size here. Obviously everything's gonna come with it for you. This is gonna be, this fitting here for boost reference will be included in the turbo. Um, you will be receiving the inlet flange here for your oil feed line that will be coming. Uh, you'll have to attach it yourself, but we left it here just for reference. This is your 50 millimeter blow off valve. Comes with the clamp and it's going to attach to your intercooler piping. This is version one. Uh, you guys will be receiving version two of this pipe. It's a much simpler, simpler pipe. There's actually no coupler here. And it's going to be very, very similar between the BK1s and the BK2s. But anyway, once you have that, it'll go right over here. There's an actual bolt, and it tightens up like that. And that's how you have your blow-up valve clamped to your pipe. Very simple. So back to the turbo. This is your T4 turbo mount flange here. You also have in the kit, right here, your turbo gasket. Goes like that. The mount comes like this, all right? Very simple, we have the screws, everything in there for, the, for you inside the kit, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, this attaches with a V-band clamp to the exhaust housing that Moody's gonna go over in a bit. So don't worry about it, we're gonna go over it. When we're actually doing the install, we just wanna kinda give you guys an overview. So next up, we have this center pipe here, center intercooler piping. This actually goes right on the center, right there in the front of the engine. This is the actual pipe that has been reconfigured in version 2 with a 90 degree bend here that has the blow off valve uh, flange here and for the BK2s it's, it's lengthened and then we'll have the IAT sensor here. Um, so that is what is the new kit here in, in the new version of the kit will be this one. Uh, and then this is this bolt right here to the front of your engine block. From the turbo you have this and the turbo sits on the passenger side so it outlets and it goes down and down into the uh, and then into this pipe here which actually comes out and goes into your intercooler in the front then from the intercooler it will come up on the other side with this pipe the driver's side pipe which then feeds into the center pipe right and the center pipe then will conclude and end right into your throttle body. Now, on the BK1, you'll have a MAF system. So you have, with your MAF sensor, you'll have a 2.5 inch to 3.75 inch coupler to go to your MAF, 3.75 inch to 3.5 inch into your throttle body. Very simple. The pipe will come in here. Like I said, the version 2 pipe will go feed right into this, and then this will feed into the throttle body. Very simple. Very easy. On the BK twos, very similar. The pipe is longer, uh, obviously, and it will feed right in here, and then this feeds right into your throttle body. Very simple. We have a huge, nice air filter as part of the kit here. So the nice thing with this is uh, it's, it's rated to allow you to have the right amount of flow of airflow into your turbo. Uh, and this is connected to the front of the turbo through the turbo inlet pipe. So you do not have an air intake anymore. <laughs> the turbo is your air intake. So this right here connects to the turbo on the front and it goes down and then in to this. And this sits right inside of the fender, oh, that, that fender, what do you call that? Behind the bumper. Behind the bumper the right there. Fender liner. Yeah. So where your washer fluid would be would the be. reservoir yeah. that we will be deleting and we will be providing you with a replacement one that I'll talk about in a minute. Exactly, exactly. And that's really the, the overview of the cold side piping. Very simple, 
you guys will get it um, when we start putting it on the kit and showing you guys during that part of the install. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty good overview of the, of the cold side. Let's go ahead and, and talk about the hot side. So what you're going to realize with the hot side is you're going to delete the down pipes from your OEM cats. And we actually recommend gutting the catalytic converters and just running those for your turbo kit. They flow very well and they bolt up perfectly to this turbo kit. You don't have to run headers and you know that just saves you extra money that you can put towards something else. From the catalytic converters, you have your U-pipe or crossover pipe. This one right here will bolt to the driver's side and this slip fitting will go right next to the passenger side catalytic converter. This pipe connects to your turbo up pipe. This slip fitting is right around here and we will provide you with clamps to fit these pipes around. Once this goes on, you have your waste gate that now bolts to this flange over here. And once again, you're going to be provided with a clamp that bolts these two together. And it will be oriented in a specific way that we'll show you in the video. From here, this clamp will be going to this turbo T-bolt, four bolt flange. You're going to have a V-band clamp that goes onto this, and that V-band clamp will just have a nut and bolt. Same thing with your turbo down pipe, which now bolts to the outside of the turbo and slides down into your exhaust. Once again, this is the other V-band. So you will only have two V-bands on the hot side of this kit. From here, this is your turbo down pipe, and this will be bolting to the Y pipe, like so. And this is also a slip fitting that we will provide you with a clamp for. You'll notice that the Y pipe has an extension over here, and this is to delete the secondary catalytic converters from your stock exhaust. So you don't need to run test pipes. We've already provided you with a solution to go to any stock or aftermarket exhaust as a cat back. So this is basically the hot side piping for the exhaust side piping for the turbo kit. We're going to move on to some more accessories and things that you're going to be needing with the turbo kit that are all provided. The first thing is a washer fluid harness relocate kit. This is for your washer fluid pump because you will be deleting the factory one, the reservoir, and you will be relocating it to the firewall. This harness plugs into the washer pump right here, which you will be taking out of the reservoir and you will be putting it in our own provided washer fluid reservoir. This bolts to the firewall with some provided self-tapping screws that we will show you how to install. And in the bottom of it, there is a hole for the pump to go in. So you'll be taking the grommet out of the washer reservoir and you will be putting the pump inside like so. You have to orient this in a specific way, which we will explain later, so that the washer pump does not hit the harness or hit anything else. And as you can see, the pump is not going anywhere because it's a really tight fit. From there, we have some exhaust wrap. And this is reflective gold tape for some of the wiring that is going to be close in close proximity to the hot side piping. The turbo down pipe, the turbo up pipe, the turbo itself. This is to protect the wiring from getting damaged. And we also have wire sheath for some of the larger harness wounds that will slip around it to do the same exact thing. Yeah. And that thermal sleeve is rated for 1200 degrees Fahrenheit continuous. You're not going to burn through that. You don't have to worry about it. No. Plus it looks really nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, from the Y pipe, you'll be bolting this to your stock catalytic, you know, stock exhaust or aftermarket, whichever one you want. We've provided you with exhaust gaskets, and these are the same style as your OEM exhaust gaskets, not the ones that will burn through that you'll get from any other exhaust manufacturer. These are high quality stainless steel. They will not rust easily, and they will not burn through. So you'll be provided with these to go to your stock cat back exhaust, or whichever aftermarket one you have. You don't have to worry about that. And they also will be provided to go for connection to the OEM manifolds. Exactly. Yeah. So and you'll get four in the kit. Yep. So any manifold that has a flange, you'll be provided with one. Yeah. 
over here, we have provided you with a step bit. And we'll go into detail about this later, but this is for your oil pan because you will be drilling into the sump to provide an oil drain line from the turbo. After that, once you have drilled into the sump, you will be installing a bulkhead fitting. And once again, we'll go through this all in the install videos and we'll show you what needs to happen. But this is a bulkhead that goes to your oil drain line and it has two washers over here so that you can sandwich it to the sump, as you can see. Beyond that, we have a relocation bracket for the driver's side fuse box. And we'll show you how to mount this to the manifold and move the fuse box out of the way so that it is secured against the exhaust and it's out of the way so that it doesn't come in contact with it. Once again, here's the thermal sleeve that you're going to be provided with for your wire harnessing. This is some RTV for when you take the oil drain pan off and you will be reinstalling it. We're providing you with new RTV sealant. You'll be provided with plastic scrapers and blades and a putty knife to be able to take off the pan as well as um, you know, reinstall it and put it back together the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And we recommend when you're doing this to take the pan off and drain the oil before you do anything because this RTV is supposed to sit for 12 to 24 hours to fully cure. So the first thing you want to do is drain the oil, take the oil pan off, drill the sump, put the bulkhead fitting on, make sure that it's secure and tight, and then put your oil pan back on, then go through with everything else so that you have all the time in the world for that RTV to dry and not leak. Yeah. What you're going to be getting next is your oil cooler kit. You have three lines with the turbo kit that you get. This is your oil cooler and it will come with a mounting bracket. You have two lines that will go to your oil drain or your oil filter housing. We provide you with an oil filter housing that has bolts for an oil cooler as well as a sandwich plate so that you can mount an oil temperature gauge, an oil sensor or oil pressure gauge to the filter housing and so you can run a spin-on filter which we recommend the 2.0T filters which are great for boosted applications because that's how they're designed, yeah. right? The third line, which is significantly shorter than the other two, is for your turbo oil drain line. This is what you'll be mounting or bolting to the bulkhead fitting in your sump. And this bolts to the bottom of the turbo, which you will receive a flange for to bolt to the turbo. Other than that, you have some other additional things this is your intercooler, and it will come with two brackets to be drilled into the front crash bar. We will show you how to do that as well. We have some thermal exhaust wrap for the hot side piping, and we will show you how we wrap the exhaust and what parts we recommend. However, you will receive a 50-foot roll. That is more than adequate to wrap all of your turbo hot side piping. So if you so choose to, you will have enough to do the whole hot side. Yeah. If you don't want to, we recommend only doing the, the turbo downpipe. These are your putty knives, as Alec pointed out earlier. You will be receiving one of these. They work really well to be able to drop the oil pan from the vehicle. This is your oil feed line. Your turbo is going to be oil cooled and lubricated. The feed line has to come in on the top of the turbo and we will show you how to clock the turbo once you receive the kit. This is very crucial that it is mounted at the top of the turbo. Yeah, it's, the turbo, the oil comes in on the top, it is gravity drained. So you've got to have it in a perpendicular uh, way to the, to the ground, right? It's got to be flowing in the exact way. Yep. Otherwise, you're going to get oil backing up in your turbo and then you're going to blow the seals. Yep. So, it's simple, don't worry. When we do the video showing how to clock the turbo and how to set everything up right, it's gonna make it real easy for you. One other thing that we provide you, which is very important, is vacuum even. So, vacuum hose in two different sizes. You have 3 8 and you have 1 8 These are the lengths that you will need to run all of your boost piping for um, your blow-off valve, your wastegate, any of those things. 
And it's also great for the washer fluid relocate kit, which we will show you how to relocate it and the lines you use for it. There are other miscellaneous items that are not here right now, but this is the majority of everything you're going to need for your turbo kit. We provide you with everything from A to Z so that all you need from your end are sockets and tools and a pot and impact driver. That would make things a lot faster. Yeah. We've taken extra care to talk about every single thing that we have gone through when we've tried to install the turbo kit and other kits so that you don't have to make these trips to the store and figure everything out in the public. So yeah, let's talk about recommended tools. So Moody kind of hit on it. We recommend an impact, right? It's an impact driver. Uh, and what that'll do is allow you to do taking off your bolts and, uh, and putting on new things so much faster. Yeah. It, it's better than a drill in that it can provide a lot more torque and allow you to drill through things that a drill would just die trying to go through. Exactly. Um, you know, we don't say necessarily which one you want to go with. I like cobalt stuff, but Moody likes Milwaukee. We have Die Hard Fan. Die Hard Fan, yeah. <laughs> Both of them are great choices. Yep. Um, so just kind of do something that you know fits for you if you don't already have yep. them. The majority of these tools you can get at a hardware store. Home yeah. Depot, Lowe's, anything like that. So if you just go there to the tool section, you'll find a lot of sockets, right? A set of metric sockets is mostly what you're going to need. You're going to need shallow, deep, and what's called swivel sockets. Um, you know, extensions are really good as well. You know, stuff like this, a swivel socket is really helpful. I prefer a different style of swivel socket, but these will help you reach a lot of the tough to get areas. Ratcheting wrenches, quarter inch, three eighths, and a half inch. Once again, you can go to your hardware store. They'll have extensions for these, they'll have kits. You can just buy the kit and you won't have to worry about going back and forth. You're going to need some specialty tools to get some of the things off and one of them is an O2 sensor socket. This is a specific socket built for oxygen sensors and when we get under the car and we're putting the exhaust on, we're going to show you exactly what that means. Most of these sockets come off with a 3 8 or a half inch. You can get these at AutoZone, you can rent the tools or you can get them online. Either way, these will make quick work of removing the oxygen sensors from your exhaust to be able to put onto the turbo kit. And one thing that we didn't mention before is when you're installing this kit, if you're going to install an AFR gauge, this is a bung that is directly made for this gauge. The AFR sensor screws into here. Yeah. That's for your wide band. And you do need it if you're going to get tuned. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Which you're not going to run this turbo kit without a tune. Exactly. Unless you want to blow your motor right away. But, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, and Moody's company, Performance Unleashed, that's where you guys are going to get your gauges from. So, we will provide you with a specific kit that we've worked closely with Remnant Performance on to make sure that these are the gauges you're going to need. They're going to give you all the information that you're going to need. Yeah. And they're going to be completely plug and play for your vehicle. There's no wiring, there's no splicing, no soldering that you need to do if you buy the kit from us. Yeah. And there's a couple of other things that we didn't quite mention. There's a couple of miscellaneous brackets. This one here is for relocating your horns to the driver side, both of them. Um, there's another bracket there for an oil catch can, but we'll go over those things as we do the rest of the install video. I think for now, I think we've got a good, pretty good comprehensive look at kind of the stuff that comes in the kit. You guys can see how complete it is. Again, you have over 180 items to ensure, as Moody said, that you don't have to make any unnecessary trips to the store. Um, you've got everything you need from A to Z. So, all right. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Hope this gives you a good feeling as you're looking to go install the kit. And uh, we'll see you next time. Let's get started.